Okay, so I was gonna play Stardew Valley today, but I just remembered. I just remembered that I was obsessed with that Terraria Wordle thing I saw the other day. So maybe I'll try doing that first. I can. I can add the thing. I think it was called Terraria. I just showed up on Space Gun, which I did, and then I narrated the whole journey. Let's see. Can I add the... Window Capture? Okay. And? Can I have one for, like... Her browser was it? Wait, I think I changed the size of everything, so I don't. Everything. Oh no, that's okay. That's that's workable. So yesterday's weapon was I mean, what's my stream? I thought yesterday's weapon was space gun, and that was a trick question. Apparently, in true Wordle fashion, there is a best first guess, and apparently that's something like Adamant Glaive or something. But I'm going to start all of these with the Myth the Legend Copper Short Sword and see where that takes me. It is melee. It is craftable. Knockback. Okay, I guess thinking about it now, starting with Copper Short Sword is pretty bad because... It's so far on the one end that I'm not going to get any useful information about it. But. It has weak knockback. And it's slower than very fast. That's an important point to know because. If something is slower, it generally has lower knockback. But something. It's not that fast, but it has a weak knockback. Obviously, it's about white rarity. It is craftable. Above white rarity. I want to say Light's Bane, but I think Light's Bane is very fast. Uh, I know it can't be material. Not a material. It. I was gonna say a bloody machete, but I don't think that's it. I was watching a video of somebody try hard this the other day, and I thought to myself, "Wow, I would never try that hard. I'm just doing this for fun, and here I am try harding this thing." Enchanted sword is a material. What about... No, it's craftable. A lot of the pre-hard mode craftable weapons, melee weapons, that are above white rarity tend to be materials. So that narrows down the list quite a fair bit. I could be thinking spears, but no, spears aren't craftable in pretty hard mode. No auto swing. Okay, what about. No, that's. I want to say, I was going to say, I think, Flaming Mace, but I think that has stronger knockback.
I'm gonna try it. Flimmy Mace. It's probably not gonna be it. It might be a wasted guess, but let me see what this gets. More than 18 damage. More than blue rarity. It's very slow. I think the harpoon does range damage, I'm pretty sure. I think I might just end up doing this for like an hour. But I only get to do this what I only get to do this once per day. So I wanna get this done. Okay. What's what's a craftable melee weapon? Wait. Wait, well, I'm thinking pretty hard mode. This this could be hard mode. Okay. Uh, what about? Our material. Uh, ice. No. Frost brand. It's not, no, it's, it's not craftable. What about the cheek? Cheek yo yo. It is craftable. Hey, there we go. Three tries. I'm a, I'm a Terraria veteran. There. Gotta take a screenshot of that. So I can flex. I'm probably just gonna do this every day. Just do the Terraria Wordle and then flex it on Twitter or something. Anyway. Turn that off and then go back to Stardew Valley. Perfect. All right, there's the festival tomorrow night. Got to check the weather. Probably gonna be nothing because it's a festival. It is Friday, so I gotta check the traveling cart. And I also gotta go claim my free vending machine. I think I like the that Terraria world thing too much because I've always wanted like a place to flex my game knowledge about things. And that, that's probably probably as good as it gets. Oh, there's a little watermelon place. I wonder if you can like So I've been spoiled on one of the the mastery rewards, it's the Iridium Scythe, and apparently that lets you Scythe crops to harvest them, which I'm really excited for. But I wonder if that works on Forge too. Um, I want to say it probably does. But anyway, I was talking about the Terraria Wordle thing. Yeah, as I've said on Twitter, like I'm really proud of that because you need to have so much game knowledge to even be able to attempt that. You know every single weapon in the game, basically. Why is it 30 grand? I don't see anything. Except for the red fez, but I can't afford that anyway. Oh, I wonder. And you get multiple of the venting machine. The Georgia venting machine. Like if you lose it, for example, or do you only just get one and that's it? Or like... Okay, is it like if you lose it, you can get another one, or is it like you can get multiple of them, or is it you get one and that's it? And if you lose it, it's gone forever. I'm pretty sure there wouldn't be permanent consequences like that. Alright, looking good. I'm on pace. 
I'm about on pace to reach to max all skills in year one, which is a goal. I probably should do something else, like some time, because I originally started this playthrough because I wanted to try out all the new 1.6 stuff, but all the hype is passed, and anyone who has wanted to play this game or check it out probably already has. But I still want to play it. Actually, I was thinking about playing a different game today because I was playing something else. I keep on that for there too. Yeah. So I think yesterday, I was bored on the toilet and I, I was looking for some mobile games. And I usually never play mobile games, but I still browse the store just in case there's... Oh god, look at my thing. I still browse the store in case, on the off chance there is something that's actually decent. That's what I thought. Okay, I, I picked up this this uh, game that's like a factorial, like, I think it's called Mind Industry. And it's pretty fun. Kind of, kind of annoying that it's on mobile though, because I don't like mobile because like of the controls and most mobile games suck. But Mind Industry is pretty good. And I thought, oh, I, I wonder if it's on PC. And it is on PC for free, technically. It is on Steam for like it's paid on Steam for like ten dollars or something. But the only benefit it has over the free version is Steam Workshop support and like Steam multiplayer. So you don't have to do a, a bunch of port forwarding yourself or something. Which which is good because I've tried port forwarding before and I hate it. I never want to do it again. But if you don't care about that, it's just totally free and completely up to date on itch, I think. I think it, I think it was on itch or something. Maybe there was a GitHub for it. Was oh, the the alien scene? Every okay, every time I see someone say "ahoy," I, I think of it in um, Hollow Lives Hosho Marine "ahoy" voice. And think, imagining Willie say that in that kind of voice. I don't know if I like it or hate it. But I think I like it. I saw um, a warm spot. Play. It's good because they nerfed clay farming. More oysters. I don't think I'm gonna pick any of these up because I don't need them. And my inventory's full. I don't think it needs fire cords, but I'm not gonna do that quest because I don't think I have one, and I'm not gonna go get one. What else was I gonna do? I'm focused on getting my skills up, so. Maybe we'll go to the mines because I'm a little behind on the combat skill. If nothing else, I should go get the the skull key. Because usually what I do is I stop at floor 115, or at, at the very least, I don't go down to floor 120. Because reaching the, the bottom floor of the mines is a check. If you have previously reached the bottom of the mines, then uh, all the monsters get stronger and they have slightly better drops, but I like being able to one-shot everything and still have like default drops. Where did the wolf from? I think I also need the uh, the golden dwarf scroll. Yeah, I still need that. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a bad idea for me to try and get that. Powder melons. Oh, did they did they ever add like a a quick stat in your by chest thing? Like Terraria has. So I feel like this game probably should have something like that, but I haven't seen it. So I don't think it actually has that functionality. Which I think I need to do. 
This is why I have the Stardew Valley wiki open. Fall. I don't think there's anything left to do in fall because it's like two days off of winter. Yeah. All right, gotta go to the mines. And... Yeah, I wanted to go reach the bottom of the mines. I'll walk in my skull key. So maybe... Maybe I should, like, upgrade my tools. Just so we know. Okay, I need money. Because I remembered... Like, I'm almost at winter. And I don't think I've upgraded my coop yet. The reason I want to upgrade my coop is because I want the auto feeding. Because I'm not feeding those animals myself. Yeah, I, I picked the, the farm layout emphasizing animals, but yet I don't really do anything with animals. I never raise animals because I don't like the. I don't like the investment. In the same way I don't have kids. I never will. Because they're so expensive to get rid of. I'm not going to give them a prismatic shard. And I'm not going to get the murder mod either. Because I don't want the murder mod. I'll get all the experience I can. I think I've talked before how I think combat is now one of the most tedious skills to max. Because it's not really like you can get like a daily routine or something. You just go to the mines and hope you get like monsters with a lot of experience and that's about the most you can do. Everything else, like farming, you just get a massive farm. Mining, yeah, I guess that's kind of the same, but like, you're gonna find some rocks. Although, I guess, yeah, money's not that bad either, because you get a lot of experience for just breaking ores. Foraging, foraging I thought used to be like the worst one, but it's not that bad if you just go to the secret woods every day. It's also pretty good if you get like forage items like a purple mushroom. But purple mushrooms are pretty rare, and you don't actually see that pretty many of them. Where's one? Oh, it's only a silver star. I hate silver star items because like it feels like half ass. It's like if it's regular, then okay. It's an item, it's, it's regular, it's what you expect. If it's Silver Star, it's kind of like it's a little better, but I feel like having the Silver Star next to the item is kind of like a stain. A stain of imperfection. Gold Star is both standard. Gold Star, gold standard. Iridium is. You can't complain about that because that's the best you can get. And for large benefits too. I think okay, I got to think of a plan. Wait, no. My plan has failed. I was just thinking, okay, I gotta sell stuff tonight so I have money to upgrade my coop the next day. But the next day is a festival, so Robin's gonna be closed. So, I'm going to wait for that next, next day. Oh. I accidentally went to the bottom of the mines. I was contemplating not doing that because I'm still going to have a bit of time. But oh well. I'm here now. Pretty sure Robin's closed now. Did 
have to paint toppers. So I feel like. I remember like complaining that I didn't have any toppers and I didn't have any oak resin or maple syrup. So I couldn't make kegs or bee houses. And I told myself I need to make some peppers. Which I never did. Because I don't have trees. I don't have trees that I want to look at. Because I don't deal in trees. I don't deal in trees. a lot of stuff. I feel like I'm close to hitting like level 10 mining just off of these. Plus that's like three gems. Make some food so I don't die. Do I have any like non-valuable food? I have this hazelnut. Wait, that just spawn in. I feel like that just popped into existence. I miss having the galaxy boots. I need I need that plus one defense. Although I guess I kind of have that technically because I have the uh, the book of thickness. I guess I'm just bad. But at least I'm not lagging this time because when I played with Loot and Zix, I lagged so bad I couldn't I couldn't exist in the mines. I should at the very least put tappers on these trees because I'm never gonna top these down. They're gonna stand forever. Look at this taking up two spaces. This is why I hate silver star items. Or I should have eaten this. Do I have any sellable crops? Uh I thought I had a bunch of stuff to sell. I think maybe I did, and then I just I bought the the Georgia warehouse, so I have no more money. I'm gonna have to feed these animals manually, unless a uh, carpenter or enter shop. How much does it cost to upgrade the coop? How bad am I? I have the coop. It's gonna cost me 30k. I don't, I don't have 30k. Unless... Unless I sell some things. I don't even have a keg so I can't make ancient fruit wine. But I have these cranberries though, actually. But that's probably not gonna put me like relatively close. I have like not even a hundred of them, and they're gonna give me not even 10k. Actually, this is why I got the fish smokers. Check out my greenhouse too, because I gotta, I gotta get moving. I chop all these trees too. I should chop all these trees down because they're they're just in the way now. My greenhouse is clean. It's 
sounds like my fish is done. Uh, the wizard's birthday is in winter, right? So I, got, I should save him a... 17th. It's a bit of time, but I should probably save him a thing. A super cucumber. If I'm trying to, like, befriend him, I could just give him void essence and, or something. Because those are, like, i got plenty of them. And I'm going to have plenty of them. This feels like they wanted the farm where, like, there's so many trees everywhere and I got to take them all down. I guess I'll let the, the little ones grow. Okay. I was counting my swings there because I wanted to double check again to see if Moss protected the tree from the swing. Which, confirmed again, it doesn't. Which I feel like... It's a little unfortunate. Uh, you could argue both ways, because if, if it did protect the tree, then like it'll be annoying to chop them down. But if it didn't, then... You really shouldn't harvest moss with an axe. I have any harvest left? I don't know if I do. I don't think I do. It's like these have two more days to grow, and I don't think they're they're gonna make it. I think I'm just gonna chop these little ones down. So I should have a 30 second window to grab my smoked fish and then get to bed. Well, it shouldn't matter too much because I can't do anything with the money tomorrow anyway because it's a festival. There. I guess I could smoke puffer fish. That's not that bad either. Yeah, lock it in. Rain totem. It's a festival day, so I can't upgrade by a coop. We chose cola. It's gonna rain all day tomorrow. All right, the the boat. Except I haven't been to Skull Caverns yet, so I don't have a source of iridium. It's rent and chest. You know what? Um, do I have any like spare sprinklers? Yeah. Oh, when these finish cooking, I'm gonna, I'm gonna furnish my greenhouse. Which sounds like a euphemism. I'm not gonna plant here. The obvious answer is to just plant ancient fruit in here and just spam that all the way. Which I guess technically I could do. It's not okay, there's a seed maker. I guess realistically I only ever need one because they work pretty fast. So I can furnish my greenhouse later. But ideally, 
not at night because at night the festival's gonna start and then by the time I get back it's gonna be it's gonna be too late so let's see I okay I know the jump from level 9 to level 10 in the skill is halfway of half of all the experience to go from level 1 to level 9 anyway so so when you reach level 9 in the skill, uh, you're two-thirds of the way to max. So I still got a ways to go for these. I wonder if I am going to reach uh, max in year 1. So it's foraging. I wonder if you can plant winter crops inside the greenhouse. I feel like you probably can because it says you can grow anything in there. And I guess this counts. Can you grow winter forage in the greenhouse? I never tried that. Like, if you think about it, I want to say probably not, but considering this is Stardew Valley, I feel like you probably can. Because there's nothing that says you can't. Well, guess I've got all day to kill, because I can't go into the town, because it's a festival. I could still go to the mines, though. I kind of wish I didn't put the gold in there, because that's going be, to be going all day. I guess the least I could do is just start processing my ancient fruit into seeds because I'm going to be starting that whole process. Do I have? I have two ancient fruits. I thought I had more. Yeah, I do have more, but they're silver quality. How do I for a seed maker? Uh, some gold. Realistically, I only need one because these things work fast. And it'd be kind of be a waste to do more. Making this too. I should also put the my fruit trees in the greenhouse. Actually, what I should do is I should move the greenhouse. That's what I should do. Actually, hang on. I'm gonna check the crops. Because the obvious answer is just plant ancient food in here and, and you're good forever. But, I don't have like, a hundred ancient fruit seeds, and it's going to bother me a lot to have them out of a sink. So what if I just planted something else? There's coffee beans. Maybe I'll do coffee beans. That's pretty good price. Blueberries are also decent. Also, coffee beans aren't that bad to have out of a sink because they regrow every other day. So, it's pretty good. Star, star fruit is marginally better. Uh, where, where's, ancient, where's ancient fruit? I want to read the stats on that. Uh, okay. 
put it back on copy. Okay. I thought the difference wouldn't be that big, but it's actually a pretty big difference. Let me double check the value of coffee beans. Does it expect me to sell them raw or does it expect me to process them? Actually, wait. This could be a mistake. If I grow coffee beans, then I'm going to have a, a lot of work. So I think there was a time where I tried to grow in coffee beans and it was a lot of work. Because you're supposed to process them in kegs, and you get tons and tons of coffee beans. I would spend like six hours of my day just putting the beans in a keg. And I wouldn't be able to do anything else. That's kind of why I like live and breathe so hard in the automate mod and my modded run. Because I had coffee beans and I didn't want like hours and hours of work every day or every other day because that's how fast they regrow. This isn't going to look too bad. Wait. Okay, this kind of looks kind of bad. It's going to look pretty bad. I was just thinking, wow, I guess like quality sprinkler is are meant to be used in the greenhouse because it fits perfectly, but actually didn't. It actually made a mistake. Well, well, that's acceptable. At the very least, I don't have to like plant sprinklers on the the tillable soil, so I save some farming space there. Okay, my gold's ready. And then I can smelt some quartz. Make my sprinkler stuff. Shouldn't take too long. Actually, am I going to farm ancient fruit like that? I think I think honestly the biggest question is how long am I gonna keep playing this run? Because it's gonna take a long time to pay off. Like a whole season. I probably should cut the seat maker out here so it didn't have to run back and forth all the time. This better not give me like wild, like a uh, mixed seeds. I think it's sometimes kind of funny what happens, but I think they should abolish the chance of getting mixed seeds out of an ancient seed. But I guess it's kind of fair because you can get ancient seeds out of just any seeds randomly. Really? 
I guess this is a fairly okay haul considering I only had one ancient fruit like growing this whole time. Three seeds, you like to see it? Four sprinklers. Only one. But well, it'll grow forever. Three, you'd love to see it. I wonder if I could get, at least get enough to fill like the entire top row. I think that'd be pretty good. Only one. I guess technically it's going average so far. Oh, season the crow. Maybe I should also get my cranberry seeds. Because I'm not filling up the whole greenhouse instantly. It's going to take a while before I max it out. I just have this here. I'm technically, this is being used to water this one single square. So I guess it's being useful. Also, I got this my cat. Got this my cat. I guess technically I could just pretty much grow whatever I want. I can grow rice. Like cranberries or what I have a, a ton of. I think uh, the ground stays tilled in the greenhouse when you leave it, just empty. So that's good. Okay, two. I'm technically above average. At least that's what I tell everybody, but they don't believe me. If this gives me mixed seeds, then I'm going to call it average. Actually, it's going to be pretty bad if I get mixed seeds out of this. Only one. You can't really complain about that. 13. Is that for the whole row? It fills up the whole row in like a one more. That's pretty good. God, I remember today's the festival day. I think it starts at 10 p.m. So I got a fair bit of time actually. It's just getting dark, and my character's afraid of the dark. Already six cranberries. That might be enough to... Okay, it's probably not enough to fill the whole thing. I guess technically I could put uh, speed grow on these things. Wait. What I could do is I could just not water these and put sprinklers down and then the next day we'll all water themselves. That would be a smart move, but I'm probably going to do it myself, because 
I'm going to keep the ancient fruit and whatever else on opposite sides of the the greenhouse and slowly like be in the middle and then slowly have the ancient fruit take over. Especially if I'm planting like multi harvest crops. then I can probably cut down on the killing off all the plants afterwards phase. Actually, I guess technically I could farm ancient fruit seeds by just putting <clears throat> anything in the seed maker. I hope I have the water for this. Yeah, just enough water. I gotta plant my stuff. But I'll, I'll just put on the sprinklers, plant the stuff, and then go. Day, I'll put another. I'll just put gold in there actually because I think that's all the quartz I need. And we're good to go for the festival. I still gotta remember to make tappers. I'm never gonna make tappers because I keep forgetting. I could do a funny thing with a jack-o'-lantern. I could, I'm not gonna buy the rare crow. How much do I want to sweat it? Because if I if I go for all the rare crows, then and I don't get this one. I have to wait a whole year for this to come back. Why not? I don't think they add anything new to this festival. Other than, I think, uh, they said if you repeat festivals, then you get prize tickets. I don't know how much though. On the wrong way. Well, I'm pretty sure that was new dialogue. Because I knew beforehand that. Your spouse would already have different dialogue here. But I'm pretty sure that was different again. Pretty sure they fixed the exploit with this thing. Yeah. I, I saw them trying to make that little fix. By having the chest self-destruct when you open it. Because before, there was a little glitch that could give you infinite golden pumpkins. The way it worked was that if you opened up the chest to grab the pumpkin and your inventory was full, it would drop the pumpkin on the ground and the chest could be opened again for another one. And each time you did it, it would give you twice as, twice as many. So you get one on the ground, then two, and then four, then eight, 16, 32. And you could literally get thousands of them just like that. If 
feel like that was not right. Like, um, as long as like the festival make you believe. I guess technically I could maybe save this. Gotta sell my cranberries. Scrounge up whatever extra money I can because I, I splurged on a, a rare pro. I don't even need it, it's just for collection. I can probably put all the puffer fish away because... I touched my wife. Probably. So the weather report said it was going to rain the next day. Should be good. Okay, gotta remember, I gotta go to Robin's and upgrade my chicken coop. Because I don't want to... Any sauce. I don't want to feed my animals manually. I don't need these anymore. Oh wait, my crops are ready. She hopes I don't mind the guinea pig smell. In real life, I think I kind of would mind. But, I think it's something you just get used to. Alright, let's pass more gold. I need those. I need the rest of the sprinklers I need. Alright. Is this going to put me over to level 10 farming? It might. Hello, thank you for the follow. Uh, Asian Pie. Hope I pronounced your name right. Oh, I did level up to 10 farming. All before winter too. That's just in time. I think I can grab the artisan perk and make my stuff worth more. But anyway, how are you doing? How are you doing today? I hope you're having a good day today. Yeah. I've been playing this Stardew Valley update for a little while. Originally, I was just doing it because I wanted to check out all the new stuff, but all the hype has pretty much died down, and so now. I'm just using it as an excuse to play the game anyway. Yeah. It didn't dawn on me until way later. Like how long this playthrough is going to be. If I want to actually see everything. Because most of the changes are end game. Like once you have like all skills maxed and you get to Jitra Island and stuff. Yeah. But one of the main things I heard was that... They added more uh, Jojo alternatives to endgame things. It's like you can just buy your way through everything. I should get that dehydrate out here. Because if I can get the Artisan perk, which I think I will be able to, because I just leveled up farming, I'll be able to get a little bit more out of it. I should have done that a long time ago. Edible fruit or mushrooms? Let's see. I don't know if this um, retains the quality. It might, 
because I know the, the fish smoker retains the quality of the fish. So I think I'm gonna try with the uh, star cranberry. Actually, let me check how long this takes. If I'm not mistaken, I think this thing takes a while to run. Dehydrator. It takes one day. So I'm only gonna be able to do this like one a day, which actually is pretty slow. Like off heap animals. Oh. I've been, I've been exposed that neglect my animals because I never checked my chicken coop. And now there's just like 50 eggs on the floor. They're already fed. Good. I mean, they have max friendship, so I'm, I technically didn't neglect them. I gave them the, the good grass, which gave them double friendship. And up, I touched them like every day. But apart from that... Wait. I might as well make a mayonnaise machine. Because I'm gonna get the artisan perk. I just remember where this thing is, because I never... I never do this. Stone, a copper bar, and an earth crystal. So like... It's full. I've got the DIY achievement. I never make the mayonnaise machine because I never... I don't do animals. But I guess this is a first. I think I said I saw in the patch notes that mayonnaise now preserves the quality of the egg. So this could be good value. Depending on how it goes. Uh... It's also something, I'll check the traveling cart. For a chill game, I sure am trying to sweat a lot of the small details. Like, oh, it's Sunday, I gotta check the traveling cart, and then I gotta do everything in the right order so I don't waste time. I got quarter robins too. Got my stones. Got the full stack. And go back to the Stardew Valley wiki. Because I don't want to make two drips. I'll make sure I have everything I need for this thing. Uh, it's... Yeah, it's just wooden stone. I should put the, uh... The golden pumpkin away at some point. Wait, I already crafted the things. Getting it all mixed up. I thought about like maybe starting a new run or continuing this run like off stream in my own time. Because there's so much stuff to do. Sorry, my hot bar. I wonder, what if they made an, like an upgrade for the greenhouse to make it so that... Oh, gold star and fruit. Yeah, I'll turn into seeds. What if they made an upgrade for the greenhouse to make it so that... Like, they would, they would auto-water themselves and you didn't have to waste space on sprinklers. Because I think a common complaint that people have about the greenhouse is that... It's not symmetrical. And that really grows some people the wrong way. What's the hard event? Where I almost die.
and this is where Abigail realizes that maybe she's not cold-blooded killer like she thought she could be. There's no other option. I mean, he didn't deserve simply sympathy anyway. But well, uh, she puts a little a little grave shrine here forever, which is a nice touch. I think that might be one of the only permanent, like, world changes that a spouse can give you. Because I definitely know that if you marry Penny, I think, you get, lim like, exclusive furniture, but you don't get anywhere else. Which is cool, but I don't want the furniture. And also, I don't like Penny. Ah, yes. Murder. Your opens better be open. Give me... a bigger coop. I gotta buy a heater too. I gotta go with the traveling cart and go with the secret woods and chop all the stumps. Because I'm not max foraging yet. Sometimes I think about how I really don't play games like other people do. Because like I pretty much sweat everything. I min-max everything. And then the people just like messing around. I think everyone else I know just plays games to mess around. And how long have I been playing Stardew Valley? Uh, so I think I got the game when it was like brand newish. Currently I have like 386 hours in it. So almost 400 hours. So a fair little bit. Like I know, I know the ins and outs of the game and stuff. For the most part, at least. This mania is very worth a lot. Yeah. Because when when Stardew Valley first came out, I think they. Like, it was all the rage. Everyone was talking about it. Everyone was playing it. And it was like a pretty big hit. Because I think... I don't know this for sure, and I think I'm probably just like making this up from personal experience. But I think one of the things that made Stardew Valley like stand out for the rest of the farming games is the fact that you could easily automate water in your crops because getting sprinklers is pretty much a core part of the experience. Because sure, I do love farming games and all that. You know, Rune Factory, Harvest Moon, all the good ones. But the thing I always hated the most about all of them is having to water your crops and like pet your animals and stuff. Because okay, I've, I've been playing like your classic Harvest Moon game since I was a kid. I think my first one was uh, Harvest Moon More Friends of Mineral Town, which back when I was a kid, I pretty much didn't know how to read and I just like played the game based on the vibes alone and just how things looked. And thinking back on it now, More Friends of Mineral Town was a pretty brutal game, all things considered. Like, it had this littering mechanic where if you dropped an item on the ground, it would disappear, and that would count as littering. And when you littered, you would lose friendship with every single villager in the game. So, don't litter. But the thing is, it clogs your inventory so much. So what you're supposed to do, quote unquote, is like open your inventory, like, select the item you want, like, and hit this card, and then it's gonna be like, are you sure you want to discard it? And then you press yes, and then it, it deletes the item for you, and 
you don't lose friendship. But that's so tedious. Like, what I just didn't say was, like, I go to the mines, I break a rock, and then a thing pops up and goes to my hands. And if I don't want it, I just throw it back on the ground, and it'll disappear. And everybody hated me anyway because I was littered, and I didn't give anyone gifts. So it didn't matter to me. But also, uh, one of the reasons I saved more friends in Minotown Town was so brutal is because... You would get locked out of stuff if you played wrong. Like, for example, I think there was this villager where if you didn't befriend him in, like, two years, then he would leave the town permanently and you could never see him again. Which, that's pretty harsh. And also, the villagers would marry themselves if you didn't get married, like, soon enough. So... You would get locked out of marriage options too if you played too slow. But I think the one that like affected me the most was that if the carpenter didn't like you, you could not get house upgrades. Because if he didn't like you, he would literally refuse to work with you. And you could not upgrade your house or build anything. So yeah. Basically, because I littered all the time, I couldn't get house upgrades or barn upgrades or anything. Which was brutal. I learned that the hard way, and instead of trying to befriend him... Yeah. Yeah. So, what I did as a kid to try and like combat that was... I tried to rush all the house upgrades as soon as possible and buy every upgrade before he hated me. I think one time, I tried doing that, and I specifically avoided talking to him. So I would go get upgrades and stuff, but I would never talk to him, so I technically never met him. So I was hoping that maybe, because I technically didn't meet him yet, he wouldn't lose friendship, and he would still upgrade my house. I think it might have worked, but I don't know. Would I ever play again? Probably not. Yeah, I was talking about wa like watering your props and stuff. That's the most tedious, tedious part. You technically can automate watering your props because there are a couple of little elves in the game and if they like you enough, they'll water your crops for you. But the keyword there is, if they like you enough, and because I littered all the time, Everyone hated me, so I didn't have I didn't have that. I did, I did not have nice things. Was there? Yeah, I guess it's a pretty nostalgic game for me. But if I went back to play it like today, I, I don't think I'd enjoy it. I think the game is far too scuffed and uh, brutal for me to enjoy. Also, the fact that in the More Friends of Mineral Town, the fact that your animals could die, like, if you didn't take care of them, they could die of sadness or starve and die. And then, like, whoever sold you the animal would lose a lot of friendship and like you'd wake up the next day and you'd be at the funeral which is a pretty bold move I can't believe they put that in the farming game it's 8 10 p.m. my inventory is full another one of my favorite um, Harvest Moon esque farm games was Rune Factory Frontier. I also got this when I was a little kid. I think I got it when I was in grade four, and that was like a long, long time ago. I got it with my sisters because we had like a Nintendo Wii at the time, and we needed some games, so we got that. And it was pretty cool. You got your standard, you know, farming 
combat in the mines because every farming game has that. Let's be real. And you could technically have animals too. I say technically because uh, you don't buy animals. You go to the mines, to the dungeons, and you would tame them. Can I... And, I, and the little kid in me was like, oh cool, I'm going to tame everything. But the thing I didn't consider at the time was you had to feed your animals. And at the very least, in this game, they didn't die. They just stayed in the barn. And they hated my guts because I didn't feed them. And I didn't brush them. That's almost at max hearts. Yeah. Watering in that game was kind of a pain too. Okay, I think I got a lot of things to say about Battery Frontier. Like, I got a lot of criticisms for it. I think upgrading your tools is a little... It's unique. It's not bad by any means, but... It's not like you go to the blacksmith and upgrade it. It's like... What you have to do to upgrade your tools is you have to upgrade your house. And then you have to buy a forge for your house. And using the forge for your house, you use that to upgrade your tools. So you craft new tools. And it will take like a bunch of materials. Like a lot of materials. I'm not talking about like, well, maybe a, a little bit of gold ore, some silver ore. I'm talking about like, okay, you need this, you need this rare monster drop that drops from like a rare enemy that shows up once every month or something. And then you need like this drop from a boss enemy that spawns every like, that spawns like twice every year. So it was really tedious. And then there'd be a crafting mini game, which you have to do to craft your weapon or a tool or upgrade or whatever. It wouldn't be that hard. But that brings me to another criticism I have about that game. It's the fact that items had levels. So kind of in started kind of like in Stardew Valley, where you, items can be standard quality, they can be silver star or gold star or iridium star, like that kind of. But in Rune Factory, uh, there are 10 levels of it. And the thing I hated most about that is because, because of the fact there are 10 levels of every item, one item could take up 10 slots. Because you'd have a level 1 item, a level 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And all of a sudden, 10 slots would be filled. And you'd have no inventory space. And I thought that was, like, really annoying. That goes for tools and weapons, too. So, I think technically, like, a higher level tool means that it does more damage, basically, if you use it as a weapon. So I don't think it matters too much for farming. But it worked with weapons too, so with weapons, it definitely had uh, a reason to do it. But the re- okay. The way you raise the level of your tool is... You craft it with higher level materials. And that sounds like pretty straightforward, pretty standard. But the thing is, uh, there was this reforging mechanic. Where you could like put in your tool and then put in some like scrap cheap materials and you could technically recraft your tool. So what you're supposed to do is like get a bunch of cheap high level cheap materials and reforge it up to a level ten. And if all the ingredients were like the same level and 
and you did the mini game perfectly, it would upgrade the result of your tool by one. Which means, best case scenario, you have to do the mini game ten times. Because you craft your tool and it comes out as level one. And then that level one tool gets used in the recipe for the next one. Right. Alright. I did I didn't actually don't the ancient seed. I remember how I caught that ancient fruit now. But anyway. Put this chair away. Report. So you have a level one tool and then you reforge it. With let's say like some level one scrap materials. And then artisan all the way, by the way. And then you do the mini game perfectly. So oh new outfit. Your outfit. That's new. I forgot they did this. So you do the mini game perfectly and your tool gets leveled up by one level. And now it becomes a level two tool. And then what you have to do is you have to get a bunch of at least level two scrap materials and reforge it again to level three. And that was really tedious. I kind of prefer Abigail in like her standard outfit. I guess it's just not too big a deal. My my winter grass. I, I also gotta buy a heater too. See what else do I have to say about Ruin Factory Frontier? Well, there's definitely something I wanted to say, but I don't know if I want to get there yet because this is gonna be a whole long spiel. Uh, all right. I guess I'll get into it now. So, the most annoying thing about Ruin Factory Frontier is that they had this system called a Rooney system. And what this was is there are a bunch of like spirits of different elements like in your world. And you could like suck them up and like redistribute them or put them somewhere else and stuff like that. And there was an ecosystem for that. Like there was um, a food pyramid of spirits and they would eat each other in a cycle. So like that. And they would occasionally like decay and stuff because you know ecosystem and all. But you kind of had to like take care of them and intervene yourself. Because if you just left them, they would eventually just all die out. Like by extinction. So like they would eat all the food, then there'd be nothing else to eat, and they would starve and die. And then you have no more spirits left. This is important because the health of your spirits dictates how easily you can farm. So, if the spirits are perfectly in balance and they're really healthy and plentiful, then that, that map counts as, like, gold. And for every gold map you have in your world, farming becomes easier. Like, for every gold you have, each crop takes one less day to go to the next stage. So like, you plant the crop and then it goes from like a seed to a sprout to a sapling to mature and then blooming. So that'd be like five days shorter for just like one gold. But on the flip side, for every dead area you have, farming it becomes harder. Not just because it takes longer, but also because the more dead areas you have, uh, the higher the chance that crops just die randomly. And when I played as a kid, all my areas died. I could not farm anything at all. Like, actually. 
The simplest crop in that game is a turnip. It takes four days to grow. And then I plant it. And because I have so many dead areas, it takes like 20 days to grow. And like, because all my areas are dead, I'd be lucky if even the one survived. So I could literally not farm for a profit at all. I couldn't farm anything. Uh, that also meant that I couldn't like grow food from animals. Because you could technically buy food just from, from the store, but it was really expensive and not worth it at all. And it was just better to farm your own. But of course, when you farm, you have to water your crops, which I didn't, like, I didn't want to do it as a kid, so I didn't. And I didn't feed my animals, so they hated me. So they, they didn't want my crops either. Even if I tried to grow grass, it would just die anyway, because my spirits were dead and I couldn't farm. So, yeah. I was also going to complain about hard events, but I'm thinking about now, I guess hard events are pretty standard for Rune Path 3 games. It's like, if you want to marry someone, you have to do a really specific thing. Like, some are really easy, like, oh, um, get them the high friendship and then watch all their cutscenes. And the other ones are harder, like, uh, beat the game, and then you can, like, begin the quest line to marry them, kind of thing. So... Uh, there was this NPC that I wanted to marry as a kid. Her name was Mist. The reason I wanted to marry her specifically was because... Uh, I technically had no sense of agency or taste as a kid. So I would, I would literally aim to marry the first person I saw. Because... I don't know. First person I see? I, I guess I'll take it. But also because... Uh, in lore, she's apparently like an old friend of the main characters. And... I was biased towards like, you know, old childhood friends kind of thing. Because I always thought like, oh, uh, old childhood friends, um, marry them. And I still kind of believe that. It's kind of funny. But, I think her heart event was, it was not simple. Her heart event was, uh, beat the game. You had to beat the game, and then you could begin the quest line to, like, be eligible to marry her. But it was, um, pretty hard for me to beat the game. Because, remember, this is a game about farming. Like, sure, there are boss fights and stuff, but... It's still a game about farming. And I couldn't farm, so I couldn't really, like, do anything. this fat. Because I think there was a uh, one part of the game progression where I had to farm in order to progress. Like, oh, um, we need this um, we need this mythical, magical uh, fruit or something. But we have this one seed. Uh, please grow it and then give us the fruit when it's done. But I couldn't grow it because it just, it just kept dying. Because my spirits were dead. So, that was tough. But also, even if you want to get married, uh, you don't buy a wedding ring or anything. You have to grow your own wedding bouquet. And then craft your own, like, postal bouquet to marry someone. So what you'd have to do for this is, you'd have to befriend a certain villager in the game, who, at a certain friendship level, they will give you the recipe for a wedding bouquet. And one seed. Oh, diamonds. 
one seed. And in the wedding bouquet recipe, you needed this thing called a blue rose. But the seed they gave you was a white rose. And what you're supposed to do is you grow the white roses. And then when they're like ready to harvest, you leave them there. And then with every passing day, there's a chance that one of them will turn into a blue rose that you need. But I couldn't do that because I couldn't farm anyway because it would take forever to farm. And also, the more days I just left them out, they just had a chance to die randomly. So I couldn't do that. The only reason I know all this is because my sister played too and her file was actually well kept and well maintained. So she could farm and stuff. So I just played on her file and like didn't save. Because if let's be honest, if I did save, I would ruin her file. So yeah. I guess next I could complain about the eating animations in Factory Frontier. Like you could eat food and like drink potions to recover your health and energy and stuff. Potions are better, obviously, because they're faster. By a lot. Like, it's comical how much of a difference there is between like eating solid food and drinking a potion. So when you drink a potion, you gulp it down in like half a second. And it's pretty fast. When you eat solid food, your character stops in place. Like they 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 munch on the food for like two solid seconds. And then and then it counts for being in. And also, you can get interrupted while eating. If you get interrupted while eating, you don't eat the food. And then you have to try again. So, food, solid food sucked. I also got another game like way later called Root Factory Tides of Destiny, which I like way, way better. Because I think I like farming games because of the the mining and the dungeon crawling rather than the actual farming. And Tides of Destiny is way more focused on the combat and dungeon delving than farming. Like, like if I had to rate Tides of Destiny's farming mechanic, it would be actually pretty pathetic because it was so like simple and low effort kind of thing. So in that game, you would like clear certain dungeons and then you would unlock certain islands that represent the season. Like the first island you unlock is the, the spring island, of course. And then you have, I think, the summer island and the winter island and then the, the fall island. And you grow your crops there. Except, you don't plant seeds. What you, what you do instead is, you have this wand, like a magical uh, sapling wand or whatever. And then you would like go to these really specific preset spots on the ground, where that indicated where you could plant crops. So you use that wand on those little spots, and it would plant a sprout. And that's it. Like, that's all you do. But it doesn't grow like that, though. You plant a generic sprout, and then the monsters you've tamed who live on the island will grow a crop for you, depending on how much they like you. Because it starts out as a... Oh, I, I can't have... I'll plant my stuff. It starts out as a generic sprout that can be whatever. And if a monster likes you, they will turn it into a really valuable crop. But if they don't like you, well, if they don't like you, they're not gonna do anything and it's just nothing's gonna happen. So yeah.
Like, you don't get to choose what you grow. Your monsters do. And that's pretty much it. That game was also easier for me because I didn't have to farm nearly as much, so feeding my animals wasn't as nearly as big of an issue. Although, I think one criticism I have about that is I don't think you can like make your own monster food. I think you have to buy it. Because in that game, uh, your monsters ate monster cookies. And it was listed as a cooking item. But I've done pretty much everything in that game and I've never seen it come up in crafting. So I'm pretty sure you can't actually make them or produce them yourself. And you have to buy them instead. Which, I mean, fair I guess, because if I could make them, I'm not going to make them one by one when I need like hundreds of them a day. So, not a huge issue. Also, it's probably because money wasn't really an issue in that game, because there was this pretty well-known like little exploit that you could do. Like, it's not really like a bug, it's just... A little thing you could do for infinite money. Let me sell all my cranberries. I'm not gonna process them all. I don't. I don't care enough for that. Okay. So, of course, you upgrade your house, and you like you buy a kitchen, and you buy a forge, and all that. But before you do that. You can go to a specific place in the village, in the town, where you could use somebody else's level 1 facility. Like, right next to your house is an inn, and that inn is where you go if you need a, a level 1 kitchen. So, okay, you can cook there. And also, when you're indoors, time doesn't pass. Okay, so you can stand in there infinitely, and... There's a kitchen there. The easiest recipe in the game is for hot milk. It's a level 2 cooking recipe. You put milk in and then you get hot milk. The important thing to note is that you could sell the hot milk for more than you bought the ingredients for. Also, because you're at the end, like, they will sell you milk. So, that right there is infinite money, if you're willing to put in the work. Crafting also used energy too, but you could just buy like energy or planting food anyway. And you could literally farm infinite amounts of money if you're patient enough. So, money wasn't really an issue for me. I just did that. So anyway, this is why sprinklers are the best thing to happen in farming games. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. I guess I should clear some of these trees, because I wanted to get rid of them for a while now. Especially with the ones around the greenhouse. Like, I want to at least see the door. Mystery box. Yeah, mystery boxes are a pretty interesting addition to the game, but they're not as good as I thought maybe. I thought maybe like, oh, maybe it'll, it'll give you a prismatic shard or something really, really valuable. But no, of course it's not going to do that because you can get it at pretty much any stage in the game. Of course I'm not going to give you like super end game valuable materials just from a random mystery box. It's probably going to give me like maybe 10 clay or something. Although I guess it is a, a nice touch. I have a friend who 
I love scratch mechanics, and I played Starter Value with them at uh, one time, and I gave them all the shields and stuff to open up the blacksmith because they love the thrill of the gacha, like cracking open shields and seeing what they get. They love that, so I just let them do all that stuff. It probably made their day, and I think it was really nice to see them so excited about. Uh, Imaginary prizes. It was a it was a fun thing to see. How much is mail sell for? Like, I want to know if this is actually worth my time, or if I just if I should just sell the eggs raw. Cause if it's not worth a lot, then I'm just gonna sell the eggs raw. I don't really care. Touch my cat. Okay, farming pretty good. I can afford the next coop when it's ready. Red cranberries, uh, it's it's okay. How much is mayo? Three ninety nine. No, that that's not worth my time. I'm just gonna get rid of the eggs raw. Mayo for three ninety nine. That's a scam. And auto grabber. Okay. Well. That that's probably going to be useful for me because, you know, as you may have seen, I don't visit my animals, so the stuff just piles up. Are my coops ready? So I should just grab some materials then head back to Robins. Then get the next coop. So it should be under control then. So yeah, I'm going to take I'm going to take a moment. The BRB. Just, just for a bit. I don't know if I, have, I still have my BRB thing. At this point, I don't know if I'm going to make actually a fancy ass. I'm just going to have that plain text.
and the back. <laughs> For whatever reason, uh, the world is wobbly. Thankfully, I'm sitting down. Okay, I wanted to go to Robin's. On the wood chipper. You know, maybe what I could do is I can, uh... What was I gonna say? Oh, I can grow my own chickens. Cause so far I just have like the two default ones that gave me at the start. Like, I'm gonna do that thing everyone does, so like I name my animals after my friends or something. I could probably do that. It'd probably be funny. I originally thought about naming one of them uh, my friend Miri. Miri the Giraffe, who is currently doing a subathon. And that's also the one who gave me the idea for this farm name. Because uh, when they first met me, they, they pronounced my name like this. And that really stuck out to me. That really stuck with me. And I, I now carry that wherever I go. But... Uh, they are a giraffe. They are a giraffe YouTuber. So I thought instead, assuming I get that far, I'm going to name an ostrich after them. Because, you know, uh, tall, long neck. It's the same thing. Uh, ostriches are basically giraffes, right? I gotta I got ask that. I gotta ask that sometime. I bet that'll get a good reaction. By the time I get to Robin's, it's probably going to be open. Still, still no oysters. I wonder if oysters spawn in winter. I should probably get um, a barn too and get some barn animals. <laughs> probably. Yeah, probably. But also, I specifically also need a coop or a barn that's not fully upgraded. So what I'm probably going to end up doing is I'm just going to get a a cooper barn, whatever's cheaper, and just leave it empty and unupgraded. The reason for this is because Robin's gone. Oh, well, to the beach. The reason for this is because I so I can store uh, fodder more easily. Because. I learned that I learned like a while ago that you could you can take out fodder from the feeder bin and you can put it back in. So you can just have like one silo or something and then just take out all the excess hay and store it in the chest. So instead of having like one silo that takes up nine spaces, store like 380 hay. You could just have like a whole stack of a thousand hay in one inventory slot. So that's way better. But for whatever reason, you can only take hay out if there's an empty uh if there's an empty feeder slot. Just the vegetables. Skeletons, I might as well take it. Actually, I think now that I've talked about it, maybe I don't have to get uh, a whole separate coop or something. Maybe I could just get like 
get animals to be one below the maximum that I can hold. Because as long as I don't fill up that, uh... As long as I don't fill up the trough, I can take out and put feet back in. But if I ever accidentally, like, fill up the whole trough, then... I'm not going to be able to, to take it out anymore. Which, which is why I might need the insurance of getting a separate like, building. Did I see any animals yet today? I don't know if I did. Might be worth checking because they are literally going to starve if I don't feed them. Which is why I'm now scrambling to I'll get back hoop to get the auto feeder. Because I don't want responsibility. Where's my coop? I should clean all this grass or something. So if I just leave it like that, then... Just... Oh, I take them out like one at a time like that. Okay. <clears throat> Wait a minute. Hmm. I'm going to think about some things like that. I gotta go to the mines. As well as other things. You no, know, uh, where's that ancient seed I got that I never bothered to give to Gunther? Because I should probably do that too. Yeah. I probably could have gotten a little bit more of a head start on the whole ancient seed thing. Alright, I already talked to my wife. Okay. I thought upon completion of the, the Georgia warehouse, the Georgia. Georgia route. I thought that made Georgia Cola into an artisan good. But it still says trash. I thought that was the case. Anyway, taking my ancient seeds and giving them to Gunther. And I'm gonna hydrate. Oh, it's Krobus. I couldn't see him because he was behind the tree. Anyway, uh, we're going to ignore Krobus because Loon's not here. Get that weird tree. Okay, K patrol for 50 skeletons. Skeletons spawn on starting on floor 70. The whole ice dungeon level. If I'm lucky, this will also put me to level 9 combat. I was gonna say max combat, but I remember it. I'm a level down. That's one. The fact that I need 50, it's now dawning on me how long this could take. This should be okay. Wait, wasn't I going to go to the museum? I forgot about that. Thankfully, there's a minecart just right nearby. So it's not that much of a time loss. I shouldn't open that. I don't want this thing. Okay. So, is this going to give me a new reward? Is this going to give me the sewer key for Krobus? Probably not. I don't even... Oh wait. Right, the ancient seed, right. That's it. That, that's what I got. 
I thought maybe for a second I may have caught the Krobus milestone. And that was a uh, bit farming. Went in the wrong place. Actually, decent to go. Jade, bone sword. I'd love to have the bone sword, except I already have something a, a little bit better. If I didn't have the Ascending Edge, I'd be pretty content with the bone sword right now, too. I also, I also want to check the quarry. I want to see if there's any, like, coal nodes there. Because I heard that, uh, they made coal nodes spawn at the quarry more. Which is good. Because late game, coal becomes a little scarce. Get three skeletons on one point, it's good. Making a bit of progress here. Little bomb. I'm, I'm remembering that one time when I was playing with a friend, like, and we were playing it on stream together. We were playing Stardew Valley. And I was telling them the mechanics about, like, if you if you get killed in the mines, then you, you lose a lot more, and then they're like, hey, uh, you don't say that, you say unalive, and like... I really hate the word unalive because I feel like it's so uncreative. I feel like you should get creative with it. Like, you could say that, that they expired or they were dis disposed of. Or, or my favorite, you could say they received the Birmingham experience. And you might ask, what is the Birmingham experience? This is where I, I break out that news article that says, like, a bunch of teens gone to like a knife fight at the like, a movie theater. And it became a, a really nice attraction. Because a lot of people were like stopping by to see who was going to win this knife fight. I think they tried to arrest the kids, but I think too many people were amused by it. They couldn't really do anything. You gotta, you gotta love a good, like, base spam like that. I'm glad Concerned Dave didn't patch that out because that's kind of like a staple now. A staple of anyone who knows what they're doing. I might as well pick up the geode. I don't need this. Mm, maybe I can sell it for something. I don't know how much it's worth, but I think it should be easier to sell weapons because, as it stands, nobody sells weapons. You can't ship them. You have to go to the Adventurers Guild and like sell them directly to Marlin, which I don't think anybody does, and not worth that much either. So just, no one does it. Well, maybe I'll remember this time. Also, at least they made it so the, the Adventurous Guild stays open like past midnight, I think now. Because before, what happened is you go to the mines and like you get some stuff, and then you need to go to the Adventurous Guild. If you need to go to the Adventurers Guild, you know, okay, uh, forget all that, let me start over. If you need to go to the Adventurers Guild, then you might think, oh, you're going to go as soon as possible. Except, you can't really do that because the Adventurers Guild opens at 2pm. 
which is later than any other building in the game. And you are not going to wait around until 2 p.m. because you're going to waste so much time like that. So then you think, oh, I'm just going to I'm going to spend the day in the mines and then I'm going to come back after. So you spend all day in the mines, like, you know, wasting your day away, waiting for the Adventures Guild to open. And then, and then like the day ends, you got to go home. So you try and make a quick stop at the Adventures Guild and it's closed. And then you gotta try again the next day. Except the next day, you can't go first thing because it's it's not until 2 p.m. So I'm really glad that they they fixed that issue because that was a pretty annoying problem to have. Sometimes I wonder what I sound like when I talk about games, like someone who probably doesn't know, like, what they're doing. I only had a dagger. I think daggers are good against ghosts. The annoying thing about ghosts is that you get knocked back so easily, so it takes so much time to wait for them to come back to you. But any, anyway, as I was saying, I wonder what it sounds like for someone to listen to me talk about games. Someone who probably just plays for fun, doesn't really know anything about the game. And I'm here, I'm giving you like the whole history lesson about the whole like history of the game and like historical moments in the game's history. I'm starting to realize that most people don't that most people don't do that. Like every crowning moment in the game's history. I was there when they were written. Something, something, do not set the ancient magics to me. I was there when they were written. Which is not entirely untrue. I have been playing this game for a long time. Like, I've been around for a long time. Oh, it's time to go. Okay, well, at this point, I don't know if I have enough time for the Adventures Guild. I might. How much bit they're closed? How much? 250? Not worth it. I should have just trashed it. That's what I'm talking about. Like, selling weapons is not worth it at all. I don't even have time to cut the ancient seeds. I'm gonna be another day out of sync. Oh well. That's a problem for future me. Hey, sauce. Just find Mary Abigail. She knows what's up. If I didn't, if I didn't, we'll do the Jojo route. That would be pretty useful, actually. I think the Rainbow Shell is one of the more difficult things to get for the Community Center bundle. Coincidentally, for Demetrius, so he just sort of paid for it himself. Or, well, he would have, but I didn't sell the town. Okay. Before I do anything on this day, I gotta remember to do all, like, my farm work. Plant my seeds so they're not even more out of sync with each other. Nice, that's two whole rows done. And then I gotta plant my powder melons.
maybe I don't actually regret not planting the first thing because I'm gonna have to like, retill all this land. I don't even know how many I have. Like, I'm not gonna till this whole place. I'm just gonna see how many I have. I have 11. They grow in one week. This is probably enough spaces right here. You just plant them actually. There. Okay, that wasn't so bad. Now I gotta go chop down the stumps. The usual. Actually. Yeah, I'm gonna go chop down the stumps and then I'm gonna grab my building materials and then go upgrade the coop. Cause I don't wanna feed my animals. Actually. I wonder how lucrative it would be to like mainly make money by selling animals. Like you can technically do that anyway, because like you get an animal and then like you get to as high a friendship as you can and then it sells for more. So I wonder what if you just like incubated your own animals all the time and they just sold them right out the rip. How much money would that give you? I, I definitely get that starter value is a chill relaxing game about like zen and relaxing and unwinding. And here I am thinking, hmm, what if I made Animal Farm in Stardew Valley? I'd do it, maybe. Actually, maybe I wouldn't do it, because that would involve getting animals. Like, if they spawned naturally on their own, then sure, I'd sell them. I would create Animal Farm in Stardew Valley. I wonder though, I might have to test that sometime. I make a lot of theories about, you know, getting things to test and stuff, but I never actually do. Unless it's for a large community event, historically speaking. Because I do come up with a lot of theories and unique ways to play games and then I never end up testing them because they're really obscure and I just forget about them. Where's my wood? Okay, yeah. Like in recent time, I've tested a lot of lethal company, you know, mod pack stuff to make sure everything's working right. It was for a community incentive, so I put a little bit extra work into it. It was worth it because it was fun. There are still a few like is issues with it that if we were to use the same mod pack again, there are more changes I need to make to it. Normally I would uh, I would have tested for these things, but these things in particular are things that I, I can't test alone. Like I need a full squad to test them and no one's gonna give me that kind of time. So I just do what I can on my own and like I have maybe like 20 minutes where I get one assistant come on and help me with all things and then that's pretty much all I get. It works okay for the most part. I wonder if I should uni unionize against my the one person I volunteered to do this for. It would, it would fit. Since... It's within the character for their community to... Revolt randomly about the smallest things. Maybe I should. I definitely should, because... Uh, coming up... They're going to start a Minecraft server, a modded Minecraft server. And... A fun fact about me is that I used to test Minecraft mod, Minecraft mod packs, like, kind of professionally, which is, it was really funny for them to hear, 
because it was like, oh, of course. They think I specifically enjoy testing mod packs, which I wouldn't say that, but they're not wrong. Actually, no, like, I like, I just like playing games. And testing them and, like, making sure everything works properly is, like, a side effect. Because I think it's kind of fun to, you know, break things. Like, break programs, I mean. Yeah, I used to be a programmer. But mostly I just broke things, instead of actually making things work. Fortunately, that's approximately one-third of the job. Inventory's full. Oh, there's a staircase. Why do they call them staircases when they're obviously ladders? Because they most certainly are called staircases and not ladders. Like... It's called a staircase. And visually, this is a staircase. But when you put it down, it's very clearly a ladder. I check my skeletons. If I was really sweating this for like in-game time speed running, there's definitely something I could do differently. I could do this like little trick in the mines where like I go down to a floor and like okay I'm gonna demonstrate it next time I see a staircase. to find a staircase now so I can continue this train of thought and give a demonstration. Can you pause? Yeah. So you go down the ladder, I mean staircase, and then as you're loading in, you pause the game. Because when your screen goes dark and fades out and then back in, time doesn't pause. So you lose a bit of time there. But if you pause the game, then it continues like fading in and out. But time does freeze, so you get extra time by doing this. And what you do is like, okay, you would have you'd be zoomed out all the way, which I'm not currently, and you'll take a look around. Or like no, you take a look around visually, or you take a screenshot of the game, and then look at the entire level to see if there's anything worthwhile on there. And then, if there's nothing worthwhile on the level, then you immediately go back up the ladder. Because as you can see, with this dialogue prompt open, time is frozen. Actually, I'm going to do this right now. Yeah, go back up. And then you go back to where you want. And if it's anything worthwhile. Actually, what you would normally do is you would go to a floor that ends in 5. So instead of putting you at the ladder, it puts you right at the elevator. So you don't waste time walking over to the elevator. But that is really tedious, and you would never really do that unless you were really, really trying to sweat that in-game speedrun time. It takes more real-life time, so that's probably why people don't do it normally. But it's a thing you can do, unless you're playing multiplayer, because in multiplayer, time doesn't stop ever. One sec. So that's a juicy bomb spot. I wonder if I can get it all. Probably not. I might miss like this little one right here. Oh no, I got it all. I'm just one down here. How many more do I need? Need like 13 more. 
Unfortunately, there's three here on this floor. I wonder if maybe I'll buy the Lava Katana because it would be nice to get a better weapon. Nine more. I might make it today, but probably not, unless I get really lucky with the spawns. Oh, you know what I should implement in my streams more? A while ago, I got like a key, like a key tracker. So, again, maybe what I could do is actually just have a key tracker at all times, like, and list out only the important keys. Maybe, like, I don't know. Because obviously with a full keyboard tracker, then I better not type anything, like, passwords or anything. Seven more. Okay. Well, there's four on this level. Maybe five, six. Okay, that's a lot. Maybe I will make it. Oh. That's the whole quest done. Like that. I just want to see what it felt like. 6,000 gold. I can go home now. Still no golden scroll though. It's kind of kind of funny. This last one I need because usually, usually what happens is like the gold scroll is the first one I end up getting before any other one, and like I get like three of them. But now it's the last one I need, and it's nowhere in sight. I technically can't even try harder for it because it has the same chance to drop from any enemy on any floor. So, not much I can do about that. I feel like I'm due for a skill level up soon, like, especially combat. Because, like, I started the stream and it's like, okay, I, I got level 10 farming and then I got level 9 foraging. And then, I feel like I deserve another one by now. some spare energy and time to kill, so I guess I can clean up some of these trees. I should make some tappers. Like, just, and just put them on trees. Like, just make them and like, have them on hand. Although that might be wood intensive, but if I just buy a wood chipper, which is pretty cheap, then it's not going to be as big of an issue. Maybe I can farm mahogany trees too. I definitely need to set up the orchard, like, somewhere. Because I gotta... I need some toppers. But I gotta decide where to put them. That's a weird tree. It's a weird little sapling.
Maybe I could put it up there. That seems like it would like be fitting. Wait, maybe I could do winter foraging. Maybe I should have been picking out some of the stuff. Alright. Hot to consider that next time I get the opportunity. Which is not now. My friend, my cat loves me. I almost called it my friend. That's not my friend, that's a wild animal that lives in my house. Because I am also a wild animal that lives in my house. <laughs> well, I can get a, a cursed chicken now. Usually I just throw these away, like, like just like put it in the fridge, but maybe I will keep it on hand and use it if I need energy or something. Because I've needed it for a couple times and I've not had it. Okay, and this, this is where Clint gives me the, the Geo Crusher, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Hope that's making him obsolete. Well, <clears throat> fun fact, uh, before the 1.6 update, it did not make him obsolete. Because prior to this update, you needed a piece of coal to operate it. But after this update, this is now free. You don't need coal anymore. So Clint really is obsolete now. I think you need like a diamond to craft it though. Yeah. But I don't have to see Clint anymore. I don't have to pay his like exorbitant 25 gold to crack open the shield and, and get a gem that's worth like a thousand. No, no more of that scam. Void egg. Eh, I might as well. I gotta think of who to name it after though. Although I'm pretty sure I can just rename him. There. I'm gonna grow an evil egg. Gotta buy a heater too. I don't remember exactly what a heater does. Well, I kinda do. It raises the comfort level of your animals in winter. I don't know what comfort level does, but it's probably good to keep comfy. Did that drop anything? I think that didn't drop anything because it just fell off the map. Weird, please fix. Let's see. Also, I noticed that when I went in that coop, uh, there was a small egg there. So, there was an instance where my chicken produced a small egg instead of a large one. Probably because they're cold and uncomfortable in the winter, and I don't have a heater. I think, I think heaters are pretty cheap. There's like 2,000 gold and you only need one. I only need one per building. I could buy two. If I really wanted to. I see that slime back there. I was playing with uh, Loon and Six a while back. I think Six bought like three heat, three heaters, and like I told him like, oh, you only need one, and like, oh. 
and they had like a bunch of spares. So what he did was he just like threw them all over like the map. Just in random spots. I should grab my prize tickets. Because upon completion of the why aren't they wearing their winter clothes indoors? Like Okay, that's a Christian I have. Theater for two thousand. Pretty cheap. Uh auto grabber for twenty five thousand. Pretty cheap. But I'm not gonna buy it right now. I can buy a cat tree for ten thousand. I don't have that kind of money. Actually, I'll go to the beach. I'll not. I'll not claim the the prize tickets yet. Yep. So I learned the other day that I think the first twenty eight or so prizes from the prize machine are fixed and always the same, which is good to know. It's good to have consistency. But then after that point. I think the rewards become random in like a pool of a few. I think the rewards also get a lot worse at that point too. I don't want any of these things. I'm thinking I might finish the rest of this day and then, then call it. Because I feel like my throat's getting a bit sore. For whatever reason. It's probably because that info dumped about like Rune Factory and the Harvest Moon so much. And then I, I retold like the history of a bunch of games. I think I also missed Lance's birthday. I don't know, too bad. I should also go. Um, uh, catch Krobus. What if they just like disappear off the map when you do that? I mean, when they run, they probably do. But I wonder if you get a mod that gives you extra running speed, and then you can catch up with them, and then see what happens really. Remember when Ollie used to give you energy and heal you upon eating it? Pepperidge Farm remembers. So do I. Also, if you do have a save from back when Holly healed you instead of hurting you. That origin the original Holly you had still heals you. So that that is now a relic of the past. Like valuable relics. Poisonous food that no longer poisons you and is in fact very nutritious. I got my generic juice too. I could probably catch a squid for Willy. It shouldn't be too hard. It, like it's definitely not the hardest thing I ever caught. That would probably have to be the, the octopus. Actually no. The hardest thing I ever had to catch was a cave jelly. Because cave jelly counts as a trash item. What that means is... In order for the game to decide whether or not you get like... A cave jelly or not. You have to, you have to get trash. So that when you finish up a trash item. You have a approximately... 5% chance that it will be jelly. So jelly is actually really hard to get. And for anyone who does get it easily, I am 
what you could be described as jelly. See. Still need some more skills. Might as well go to the mines. Like, at the very least, I won't get to level 9 combat because I am behind on combat. At the very least, the bookseller is going to be in town the next day. So, if I'm really worried about that, I can just maybe buy a book to catch up. emeralds here today. Maybe what I should do is I should go to the, the quarry mine and uh, grab the golden scythe. Could be a good idea. It could also be a bad idea because doing that enables skull floors to spawn in the mines and I don't like that. But there will definitely be a time where I do it anyway, because I gotta get it eventually. I also wonder if they like changed anything about it, like maybe they updated it or made it better. If there's one thing that did with it, I hope that they made it like not permanently losable. Because before, you only get one. If you lose it, it's gone forever. So I hope they changed that at least. Because if they didn't, well, I hope I never lose it. Like, just make it respawn in, like, the Reaper's Hands or something. So you can just go get it again. I feel like that would be right. I'm getting kind of hungry. I think I already know what I'm going to have for dinner today. I have some, like, fried rice that was made yesterday, which has been refrigerated, so it's a little unfortunate that it's not, like, you know, hot and fresh anymore, but nothing a little expert chef will solve. And by that, I mean I'm putting it in the microwave for a variable amount of time. I feel like I always do this weird thing with microwaves. So I always put in like really specific times to microwave for. Like I, I get a slice of pizza and I'm thinking like, I put in the microwave and I close the door. And I'm, I'm staring at it thinking like, hmm, how much do I, I want to heat it for? And like I stand there for like 10 seconds thinking about how, much, how long to heat it for. And I'm thinking like, okay, I'm going to heat it for 37 seconds. And that should be good. I used to have a formula. I used to have a formula for how long I want the pizza. It was like... Okay, if I bought the pizza that day, and it was like... Like, I got in the afternoon, and it was now like the evening. The pizza's like, a little bit cold, but it's still like, fresh from the day of. In that case, I warm it up for... 27 seconds. And then, like, the next day, like, I warm up for 30 seconds. So basically, by default, I warm it up for 27 seconds. And then, like, for every, like, for every day that passes, I add an additional, like, 3 seconds. Basically. Basically, for every day, like, more complex. It's pretty much per instance, like... Like, it comes home fresh hot, I eat it like that. Like, at dinner time, it's cold, gotta warm it up, but it's still like, from the day of, 27 seconds. Like, 
uh, breakfast next morning. That's uh, 30 seconds. Like dinner that day, 33. And like the next day for breakfast, uh, 36. Usually it doesn't last that long though. I've never had to go, I've never had to go to 39, which is a good thing. I should actually eat this. I should head back now. And then call it in. I could just chop some trees to pass the time. I've still got a lot of trees to clean up. up to. I think the next day the coop might be done and I can see about getting an additional pet. Stuff's still growing. I'm just gonna spend all the energy chopping trees and then end the day and then wait out. I should probably start from the bottom so I can at least see what I'm chopping. Who knows, maybe this, maybe this will put me to like level uh, 10 foraging. Oh, there's a stump right there the whole time. That means I I could have passed that one, that Froppin's resource rush for hardwood. I'll keep that wild tree there. I'll keep some wild trees somewhere, you know, for decorative purposes. It's about time to end the day. So, I will do so. If I can just find my house. And put some more iron on.
I might, my animals can do without the heater for another night. And we should be okay. Booksellers in town. I'll have to check that out next time. For now, though, I'll read out to Miri. Well, seemingly is still plagued with MDA raincoat. Which they've been playing it for a while. Yeah. They. Oh, they changed the whole raid thingy. That's nice. Cool. It's like a whole window now instead of just like a little thing. Star raid. Oh, it's bad. It's, uh, it even has like the subtitles on in case I can't uh, get here. Cool. Oh. Can't wait to see how this goes.